I need to get these people some ice cubes. I need to relocate the ice maker line from that side of the kitchen to inside this recessed cavity that I built. Uh, it's a really simple process. Uh, I'm going to take you through it step by step, starting with the ice maker line kit. You can get these at any big box store or you can order them online. I'll put a link for this kit in the description below the video. This is all that's in the kit is you have your quarter inch tubing. The other thing is this saddle valve. I really do like these. They work great for putting in ice maker lines. All you need to, is, a, is a copper pipe and you just screw this right on, clamp it down and twist this in. It's getting less and less common for me to be installing ice maker lines. Uh, the reason the kitchen or the house has already been set up and converted to have a water supply for the refrigerator. Um, but in the rare case that you still have a house that, don't, that doesn't have one, uh, this here is a very easy solution. This, the pipe goes in here, you squish it down, and then there's a needle, a very sharp needle that pierces the copper pipe and creates its own compression seat. Is that the, the best terms I can use here? It's basically a water shutoff. It creates its own seat for the needle valve. And you back it out once it's punctured and the water flows out the tube here. We're not gonna use this since this house, as old and as non-updated as this house is, it still has an ice maker line. So that's why I say that it's very rare to find a house that doesn't already have one of these valves in it. So this is the old copper ice maker line. Uh, it's flexible, but I don't like using them because it's just so easy for them to kink. And I don't know, they're just, uh, they're not easy to work with. This is all CPVC. This pipe here going out the house I believe that might be a hose bib, but this shutoff here goes to that copper copper line that goes up through the floor there. So I'm going to reuse this for now. In the future, I will be taking out all the CPVC in this house and installing PEX. But for right now, I need to get them hooked up with some water to the refrigerator, so I'll be disconnecting this fitting right here uh, th that will remove the flexible copper old line and then this 90 degree elbow has to get rotated 90 degrees to come out this way because that's the direction of the new refrigerator <sighs> see the thing with cpvc is it's very fragile if you put any f torque on it they just crack I gotta turn this thing counterclockwise from the other direction. We have to re use these in reverse here. There we go. Across the wrench has a better angle for this position. So what I'm doing is I'm loosening this up and I'm going to see what, what part is turning. Okay, the, the main part is turning. This fitting is turning out of here, so I'm going to tip back all this out, take this apart from this, clean it all up with new uh, pipe dope, and uh, put it all back together in the right direction. Okay, you are now in the uh, my tool trailer, my mobile workshop, which is a disaster right now. As soon as this kitchen remodel is over, 
I hope to be able to uh, gut the entire inside of this and rebuild it. Um, I built this all from scrap wood 10 years ago. I bought this, this trailer and it's worked pretty well. It's gone through some changes. I've got a video or two out there somewhere on the internet about it. But I'll, I'll be doing a full remodel of this on the Handyman Business YouTube channel. To get the right angle, it's a piece of cake. And I'm just going to put these two together right here on this bench. I picked up this light on Amazon. It's got some magnets on there. And it's proven to be pretty useful so far. It's kind of tiny. Someone was giving me a hard time because it's a, it's much smaller than you would think it is, would be. Um, but it's battery powered. It's supposed to last like five hours, five or six hours. And it also has this <laughs> red and blue for some reason on there. But it's got a, there's one brightness, there's the next brightness. And then you got your cop car lights and then off and it does not come with any charging cables you just use your phone charger This is the wall behind the refrigerator. You can see there's some existing wires there to the right. And right here, geez, there we go, maybe right, right there, I'm gonna put another hole, smaller hole, right down into the basement. But uh, I just use what, what works. And I picked these uh, drill bits up. God, it's been like six months. I think I got them at Home Depot. And they're cobalt. And not to be confused with the cobalt with the K that's sold at Home Depot. Uh, from my understanding, they, this type of metal is just really, really strong and holds, a, uh, holds an edge much longer than any other drill bit and I'm very happy with them it just went straight through that wood like butter you got to take care of them though I haven't lost any yet and it's been about six months which is probably a record for me to not break one or lose one but they were they were a little pricey I'll put a link in the description where you can get these what I got here is the other fittings that came with the uh, the kit now one end I'll take it off for you. There's this metal sleeve that goes in here. <laughs> Some people like to say that you're not supposed to put a metal sleeve inside a plastic pipe. Uh, but the, the reality is, is it, it comes with it. It's meant to be used on this. It's kind of strange. But, um, the reason you need that that metal sleeve in there is because there's a little ball inside here. Let me just pull it out. I don't know if you guys can see that. When you 
compress this down, tighten this down, that ball squishes. It squishes inwards and it presses against the other fitting up there on the joist to make a compression fitting. Uh, so the threads don't seal anything. But as this ball there squeezes inward, because this is plastic tubing, you need this insert so that that ball squishes the plastic up against this this insert here so just like this it's gonna be a tight fit getting a wrench up on this thing i think i'll be able to manage So in the last video when I was talking about clearances and that the back needs two inches of clearance this is what you need to clear for you cannot have these pressed straight up against the back of the wall these they just can't make it. I mean they do okay but two inches is what you're gonna need to get these things to lay flat without kinking them where they come out of the refrigerator So on the final install of this back panel here, I'll be putting a notch plate, a steel plate over that stud so that in the future, nobody ever tries to screw a screw into the water line. Since we had some good discussion about refrigerators uh, in the last video, I'm going to pop this panel off here. You can tell that this is an air intake or exhaust. One of the two is probably an intake because I see some foam filter material back here. I'm going to take this off and clean whatever, whatever it is that I find inside there. side of a refrigerator looks like this here definitely has some some dust in it now the refrigerator is currently running here it running and I don't feel any any ha uh, fans running or anything like that so right here is a fan and I believe this is the filter yes so it's sucking air in, and this is air blowing out. This is my simple handyman socket set. I've actually lost the ratchet. I have no idea where it went, but I still use it with these attachments that go to my impact. There's the quarter inch drive on there now, 3 8 and half inch. Those just drop in there like that. I've had this for a long time. I actually bought this when I was broke down on the side of the road. I had a, uh, a belt tensioning pulley in my old truck uh, seize up and go out on me. And I didn't have tools with me, but I was close to a Lowe's and I was close to an auto zone. So I went to AutoZone, bought the, uh, the tensioning pulley, walked across the street to Lowe's, bought this socket set, then walked back to my truck and replaced the, uh, the pulley right there on the side of the road. And I've had it ever since. It's worked out pretty good, except for me losing the dang socket. And the socket, or the, the ratchet, uh, it's a double-sided ratchet. So one side has half inch and a quarter, and the other side has three eighths. Uh, it's not something that can just be replaced. All right, back to business of putting this thing together here. This is another compression fitting. This goes inside this part here, 
just goes up to it and just presses that ball right tight to it and squeezes it all together. About right, good and tight. Uh, there you go. So now that is a watertight connection. Time to turn this sucker on and check for leaks. I like to just to turn it on a little bit. Just crack it open and slowly let the system fill up with pressure. So you have time to run around from down here, checking this, to upstairs, checking It didn't take much. Uh, so it's just cracked open. That's off. This is on. And now I'm going to go upstairs and bleed the air out through the refrigerator to get water and everything. And we'll be back looking for leaks. Good thing is I don't see any leaks on the, uh, the CPVC. I can push this around, flex it around a bit. No leaks on the CPVC that's on the other side of this uh, valve there. We're back downstairs. I'm going to fully open up the water. It's fully pressurized. Don't be fooled. Just because this is uh, hold on, off and then just a quarter turn on, you will get 100% pressure in your pipe. It's not a pressure regulator when you have it just barely opened. It's a flow regulator. But it will allow you to slowly increase the pressure just by cracking it open. No drips at all. Handyman has no drips. First time every time. No drips. I'm going to go check the upstairs fitting one more time before we push it back into the hole. Sometimes when you feel it and it's cold water, it'll feel like it's wet, but it's just cold. And you can see how dry and dusty my hands are. There's no water on there at all. Move it around, still no water. I got it taped up here, so there's nothing on the ground for this thing to roll over. So we've got a lot of uh, extendability in these coils here, and they'll all just get pushed up flat, flat up against the refrigerator. Yet I'm really liking this light with the magnet on there, especially for filming. Still has the uh, the police lights on there. There's one setting, high setting, and then for some reason police lights. All sorts of strange stuff comes out of Gina. Well, it's pretty straightforward. I try to talk and give as much information as I can. Um, it's, it's it's a tough decision. Do you talk or do you just do the work? And how much time do I have to do a voiceover? Well, I don't have that much time to do voiceover, so I'm just going to edit this one a little different. I'm going to leave more of the talking in. I'll speed up what I can. Uh, just, we'll just see how this one goes. Leave a comment below. Did I talk too much of this one? Should I put the extra time into just speeding everything up and doing a voiceover? Uh, it takes, takes an extra bit of time. Not too much time. Maybe another half hour, 45 minutes. But I'm already pressed for time to begin with, with this remodel and other customers. Um, warranty work, things like that. Yes, warranty. Uh, tune into the Handyman Business Channel to find out about how I address warranty issues. <sighs> Click that bell. You don't want to miss. We start demo tomorrow. I have to do precision surgery on this wall. And I just don't know if it's going to work because it's lath and plaster old school and there's a coved ceiling on the other side that they really need to have. It's mandatory that that coved ceiling is not messed up. That will be linked in the description along with all the tools I talked about today. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.